Hello and welcome to the Preserve Championship on Jomez Pro. We made it. The smoke has cleared. We are having the final day we all deserve on the Disc Golf Pro Tour at the Airborne Preserve with Big Sexy Barry, Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Uliberry. Grip six low profile, we have Eagle McMahon sitting in first place, tied with Ricky Wysocki at 24 under par. C1 regulation, high percentages. Fairways hit for Ricky, high percentages. Just like you'd imagine, these guys are slicing and dicing this new course here. Macbeth, two shots back. He is also in circle one quite often at 72%. And rounding out the card, we've got Matty O. Three back at 21 under par. It's going to be awesome, y'all. That profile shot, Rick looked like he saw a ghost behind the cameraman. I don't know. Looking at hole one right now, par four. You'd like to get as big of a drive as possible into that middle. Keep in mind that left side rough is out of bounds. And then you play the crossing shot over that little strip of OB into what Throwing has been a fast green. Today. Give it up for... Kale Laviska. Cool moment here, course designer. And owner here at the preserve. Four. Didn't have time to get a good warm up in, I don't think. And, and why would he? He's busy. He's got other things to do, but a very cool moment. Something I hope we see more on the From disc golf pro tour with a share of the lead at 24 under eagle mcmahon no hotter player on the planet than eagle mcmahon four wins on the disc golf pro tour already this season i know a lot of people who would have taken gail's drive on the right there very safe very <laughs> you know he knows this course he knows that right side's where you want to play eagle has no such ambition though he's going to put the hurt on this thing. And this is the first time we're going to see Eagle throw on Jomans this week. This is a course that we saw him play very well last year, and it's, uh, it's exciting to see. Big shot there down the right side. Well Next over 500 feet. Our other co-leader, also at 24 down, from Campobello, South Carolina, Ricky Wasaki. <laughs> Ricky Wysocki coming into this round in Disc Golf Pro Tour events that are three rounds that he's been tied or leading. It's happened 10 times. He's went on to win six times. Tied once, and he did not win. Outright lead nine times. He's won six. These stats provided by Statmando. Gotta love Statmando. Ricky pummeling that one right down the middle. That's a great shot i mean that's huge distance but also the control to fade left he's gonna have just a putter in also worth noting ricky has never won a three-round event when he was tied for the lead after two rounds that's happened only one other time i don't even know what to think about that some of these statistics i don't know either but i do know to say that Macbeth, who's been trailing by two strokes or less has happened seven times paul's won five of those seven times. So he likes coming from behind on Sunday. You know, he has that Tiger Woods effect where it's like, oh my goodness, what is Paul McBeth doing Virginia, out there? Alabama. Make some noise for Matthew Orham. Matteo coming into this round, never having won a Disc Golf Pro Tour event. But he's been in the mix so many times, taken second place at Worlds numerous times, and he is looking to win his first Disc Golf Pro Tour event, and, and what a place this would be to do so. But he's got to go big on his second shot after the errant drive. No, it's just, can it slow down? The tree will help, maybe. I think that stays in bounds, but that's a lengthy putt. No 
nobody better to ask than a stylish man like you, Germ. Is this the most fun shirt I that we've have seen out of this? I mean, this is kind of out of character, I feel he's like. He's got the coral shorts on. He's got the fancy shirt. I'm loving it. Eagle going to go to the opposite side of the fairway to bring that in or to the green, mind you. Now one gets away from a wow. little bit. Yeah, yeah, these are not great shots into the mm. green so far. You know, the, the hyzer for the forehand is blocked by those trees there. It's more of a straight shot in with the backhand hyzer, like a slight hyzer. I think Ricky's thinking, what are you guys doing? Watch this. Yeah, seriously, this is pin, pig point accuracy. Yeah, eh, it got away from him a little, but I think he should have no problem. That's still piggy by Saki range. That was a fantastic bid from that awkward lie. Not many players are going to give it a bit better bid than that. Eddie O out of position after the first. Big second shot, a little bit of an unfortunate rollback, and unable to collect the putt. Where is this coming in statistic wise? As far as difficulty. Right in the middle. It's the ninth most difficult. And these guys are making it look a lot harder than that. 3.74. It's a quarter under par. You're looking to pick it up. And Ricky has got an opportunity to yeah. get a stroke on the card. Wow. And he is unable. So I this is this is rare. Even the big dogs get a little nervous from time to time. Maybe tight race, big crowd. Yeah, I mean, a couple of tight shots. Yeah, I mean, we could excuse the way by, by saying something about the situation, but these guys are all used to the situation. The wind, it's a little windy. It's not that windy. They're just chalk it up to a little bit of errant shot. One errant putt from Ricky. Move on to hole two. Yeah, Eagle having to go knee putt, knee putt. But, I mean, also, th these comebackers got a little away from them. Knocking those 20 to 25 footers down, they can still gain a little momentum going into hole two. Pars all around for the leaders. I'm Paul Uliberry with today's Bushnell hole breakdown. You can find the Edge Disc Golf Rangefinder at the link in the description. When you're dealing with a Le Visca design, you'll know you'll have at least one tight par three. That is hole two. With the game leaning towards big distance, it's surprising how a lot of the best in the world can still struggle at the basics. How buttoned up is your game? Let's see how it plays out. So Eagle remarkably still on the box with a par on one and able to throw a very nice second shot here, or first shot here on the second hole. Yeah, that's tuxedo buttoned up right there. <laughs> yeah. That is nice. Yeah, I was going to say his collar's getting tight, going all the way to the top button. <laughs> Eagle's been in the situation where he's been tied or leading going into the final round of these three events four times, and he's won all four of those times. Mm, here's that's a nice percentage. Here's Ricky, and with that pig shot, he'll be licking his chops from Circle's Edge about. Inside. A little tight. Yeah, that's not going to get through. That's the tree you're trying to miss. And Adio a little inside also, barely unable to hit the gap. We played three rounds this weekend. I feel like I hit those trees 40 to 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got to think that it might get into these guys' head. Even though they're the best in the world, you're looking at 15 unders being shot out here. You miss one and two as Matty O makes a good little run there. You miss one and two right off the bat. Ricky only missed three the first round. Yeah. Ricky able to collect the birdie. So quick starts, you know, go a long ways.
When I walk up to a shot, I'm looking for the target. I'm looking at obstacles around the target, specific landing zones, looking at the height. Knowing all of that, I'm able to shape a shot. I don't want to think, did I get the right shot? Did I get the right distance? Like, that's it, I got it. Confidence is everything, and the Edge Disc Golf Rangefinder gives me exactly that. Yes, I would agree. Is certainly starting with three, four, and five. I mean, three isn't so difficult, but four and five is really where the course becomes challenging. Not getting the flip up that he desired, or did he? Oh, I he think he's going mid range. Oh, wow, yeah. that just... looks so bizarre from that angle. It looked like it was hyzering out, but I think he did that to me in. Um, That's a or somebody else did that to me in round two, how it looked high, but then it just kept flipping. Correct. That was 14% from Eagle. We have that written. Also, a stat from Statmando, 14% effort from Eagle. And just the, the rock, the mid-ranges, all the way down 400-plus feet onto into circle one. I saw a lot of people trying to throw the flip up down the right side to hug the tree line. Kind of like this, but what happens is it gets on hyzer and then it gets quick. I think this is the tougher oh. play, even though he plays it perfectly. Drifting something from left to right, like you saw Eagle and Ricky do, I believe is the smart pro play right there. Certainly less leftward speed with the OB being the, the big risk down there. Possible sports center moment here. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh, a charity donation. Beautiful Fantastic. shot from Maddie. And Macbeth is going to be as you know, look, take a look at this shot from Maddie O. All four beautiful shots, really. This one that gets the charitable donation. That's the sweetest one there is. But all four great shots, and Macbeth is certainly look looking to make a little redemption from the double bogey he took in round two. Ricky a bit low on the elevated basket. Let's see if Macbeth can answer that double bogey with a birdie, and he can. Onto the board. Great birdie. All right, now just birdie out, and you're uh, one off or one ahead of the course record. So that's nice. <laughs> so crazy to think. <laughs> Ricky in round one, four pars and an eagle on hole 18, 15 under. It's just what a statement to be early in the day as well. Everyone pretty much had to play after that. And this course was made much more difficult. 15 under last year, I mean, anywhere you go, it's a fantastic score. But last year when the course was easier, 15 under was amazing. 15 under this year just seems cocky. It's just like too much. It's too good. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Hole four, par four, 746. This through the gap and then way, way right. You've got to get to that perfect depth on this fairway to line up a straight shot through this gap. It's The basket is far enough through this window that I don't really see a lot of people having success throwing hyzers through. You'd really like that second shot to be straight. And then you got that little dip and a couple more trees to protect the basket late. Eagle going air shot turnover. And if this holds, this is fantastic. And I think it is fantastic. That'll set up a hyzer approach. It's a little bit long of the ideal landing zone for the straight shot, but maybe Rick, I mean, maybe Eagle likes that. Yeah, he's so far up there too. So that makes your, your life a little easier. Yeah, and catching a good break, catching some limbs there. I think that would have flown the landing zone a good bit. And this is stalling out to the left, but he'll have the same sort of shot from there and very doable. Yeah, that would be more like a 400-foot a shot, maybe 378 or so. 
I don't know why it's so specific, but. And seeing uh, Paul's disc fly high over the cameras, how nice to see some nice clear blue sky, some oh. beautiful fluffy clouds after yeah. the smoke we've been dealing with. Such a relief to have this round go off as scheduled and to get the treat of the battle that we're watching unfold right here. How many times do you get to play the last round of a tournament twice? That's essentially what we're doing right now. It's, all these players thought that round two was the last round, or at least they played it as if it were. Ricky, perfect drive. Right between those trues, trees is ideal. So Macbeth is going to have to keep this very low and try to skip it from right to left. And that's... Did he Very do this? Low. Wow. Did he do this? Wow. Oh my gosh, he's gone past the basket. That oh was an incredible shot from that God. far back from the gap to hit it perfectly. Oh my that was amazing. Goodness. That is a premium player throwing a premium shot, and that is the tree to beat for Maddie o. He's hit it twice, once on hole two and now on hole four. Ricky overstable. Yeah. Can it fade? Not quite. Yeah. That's a kind of a Ricky signature moment there. 60 footer, perhaps. And look at this the grenade. So he is out of position. But he also is fantastic at this. Can he get it all, all the way over? No, he can't. Too high, even for the young bird. But that's playing a little bit downhill depending on that guardian tree. He could have a little bit at that one as well. Ricky being outside of that even. Ooh, just catching a little image there. He wasn't tracking it down, but he was he was watching it. Let's see if Maddie can get the right Anheuser angle on it. Come out. Oh, Give yeah. Oh, yes. Give it to him. Hammer fist. That wow. was huge. The full S right back into the chains. Beautiful putt. And Maddie, oh, he's back in it. He's only three back. Ooh, little touch. Yeah, and that's a bit awkward for him. He likes to put it dead straight at the basket. That one he's having to work around. Macbeth, easy birdie Insane. from 400 out. Insane to hit that gap with that amount of accuracy, touch, nose angle. I mean, without a doubt, the worst driver in the group, far and away. Yep. And still the closest guy. What a shot. I wonder if you would rather have Eagle's drive or his. I mean... At this point, obviously, I'd say, I think you'd take his, but I mean, if you would say, you know, you could take Eagle's drive or yours, I think you'd probably even take Eagle's drive. I think so too. I, I think almost for sure. Hole five, par four, 695 feet. Is this the most difficult? It's getting close. Oh, isn't it's, it? oh it's been the for most sure. difficult yeah. all week. It's this has been the one. It's over, over half a stroke above par all week. Actually. Yeah, so tight. You have to get so, so far before this tunnel becomes really accessible for the players to work it in there for a birdie. So really a fantastic drive, almost required to be in a position where you can attack on this hole. Not only to attack, just to save your par. I mean, this is so hard to save the par if you are not in the fairway, in a perfect spot. Ooh, if that kicks uh, left, that's not it's good. bogey. I don't... I don't think he can even get out of there into a position where he can save the par. Really? It's so, so thick in there. Have you been off to the left side? You know I have. <laughs> yeah, okay. So <laughs> you know it's not good. That's off to the right, but he's going to have a, some sort of shot to get him in that position you're talking about, into the mouth. But he's still going to have 300 at best in. And this is blasted. Oh. Eagle in round one was in the mouth of the gap, and that time that shot absolutely beautiful. And I don't know if, unless he goes over the top, if he can get up to the green. He's just not far enough down the fairway, or left enough to be able to access that gap for his second shot. I I honestly think because he's so close to that other tee pad, as this is 
also getting that kick right, that's going to mm-hmm. be tough. But I think Eagle so far, he might have some sort of workable angle in there. He's got to be inside, what, 300 feet from there? Eagle? Yes. Oh, easily. He's yes. inside inside 300 feet. He's probably 275 feet. Ooh. That's not... Wow, it was trying to finish. It really needed to pull left. Are you buying bogey? Oh, I would never pay my hard-earned money for a bogey. A lot of hard work for Matty O just to try to get back to the fairway. I don't know if he succeeded in his venture. So here's what's tough about this. He's going to go for it, but he has to have slow with, and that's just yeah. brilliant. He has to yep. slow down the arm speed with a stability that's going to come out at that angle. So he's manipulating the angle with the disc choice as well. That's highly skilled and very hard. And that was best case basically for Rick, I feel. Here's uh well I'm Paul Paul says you're buying bogey, Jeez, huh? Jeez, dude, what? No one saves par from there. You you're right, is going over the top, Jerem here. This has to oh, be no. so far left. That is not good oh, at all. Oh boy. So there is a big oh, field on the left there that you can see, and boy. that's all in bounds. <sighs> He's going to be oh. pin high, and to get back to the basket isn't going to be that difficult. He's going to be able to get to circle's edge. Is Around that, the backside. Yes, but then he's going to have, he's definitely going to have a tough shot, even to make his putt. What is this? Whoa. No way. That's the best <laughs> shot of the tournament right there. Hands down. Oh the God. creativity to land it in the fairway. Oh Are you kidding God. me? That is the best shot that I've seen in a long time. Oh my gosh, Ricky! Oh, a roller from Matt through all the branches down onto the fairway and puts the brakes on. That was incredible. I don't know what Eagle has from here, and it's through everything. Are you kidding me? How do you get through all of those trees? Unbelievable. I I need a bogey sandwich for calling Paul for bogey I, right I'll there. I'll make you one after yeah. we're done. That is insane. And that was a par. Okay, well, Eagle somehow manufactured his par, and this group is going to walk out of here unscathed with only Eagle quasi in position. And that's There were some amazing shots thrown there. Every player through an amazing shot Beautiful. on that hole. That was incredible. Hole six, par three, 398 straight away. No out of bounds, tough rough on both sides, especially tricky putts on the left side in amongst those trees. Yeah, we've seen the players have a tough time slowing the disc down. That's been the struggle. This gap is huge. Oh, wow. Paul, a little bit with that left to right wind. <laughs> Oh, wow, he's got it inside the circle. Yeah, that fairway's so big. <laughs> okay. That was not looking like it was going to be inside the circle drive, but enough stability at the end. Not the worst break. He won't be in the rough. He'll have a long putt. Eagle a little heavy on the hyzer, not quite getting the beautiful flip up that he was expecting. Still right there on circle's edge, but obstructed. What? What? <laughs> what? What made him do that? That was really crazy. This is a pretty big gap. <laughs> yeah. All I right. guess he's found some success with that shot. I'm surprised, though. That right side is very thick. I don't really see how it's supposed to <laughs> swing in. He must. I mean, Ricky's practicing the course almost more. I, I would imagine just as much as anyone else possibly could play a course. Absolutely. And he had success in that in practice, but 
I don't care how much you practice the course. Yeah. That's a silly play. I agree with that. I just, he must have had some success that made him think this is the percentage play. I, I disagree with you as well, Paul. Mm. Is our lead card looking human to anyone else? Me. No, I played the same day. I, this is, they're still playing way better than everybody else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the score indicates that, but the Matty play- O just threw a sky roller over the, th- Paul McBeth got up and down from yeah. the hardest places right. ever. Eagle threw it in a, a tent we didn't even know existed on the left side. Yeah. Bar. Okay. All right. Roll tide. Ricky thinks that he can just chuck hyzers over the biggest trees in the world. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. I see your point. I see your point. Well, at least Paul got the birdie here. Taking a look at the aerial view, we got the drone way up there for you guys to show you the entire 1100 foot par five. You have your option either side of the lake here. We're showing you that left side option, big drive, big hyzer, another big hyzer, and then a forehand or turnover into that sloping green. And this is smart. Paul keeps it on hyzer the whole time. There is a little wind out there. It's a helping wind, so he could get aggressive and and try to get something way up there. But this whole place is such an easy birdie if you just do what he does right there. Hyzer, hyzer. Matteo playing opposite side of the fairway here. There are two fairways, and he does it very well. I think he's doing this to set up the big, long roller that can... um, Get all the way to the basket, I think, if he hits the angle correctly. There's about three or four different ways I could imagine this fella getting to the basket in two. One of them is certainly this one. Turns it late, oh. riding the water line. The trust in the disc to be able to flip it up just enough, but not too much with that much power. That's what's so impressive with Eagle's form is that he knows exactly how much hyzer to throw without making the disc turnover when he doesn't want it to. Hardly ever see turnovers from Eagle. He's usually just flipping things up to flat. This is looking really good. One of the things that'll give you guys perspective as well is the camera crew is really good at what they do. They get into nice positions. Anytime you can flip a cameraman around, yeah. You threw it way too far. <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck, cameraman, being on the other side of the lake as Matty O rips his second. We got catch That's cam a there. Great shot. Yep. He's going to have a straight ahead 250 to the basket. And shout out to the camera crew who caught that nicely from the side angle. Maybe we should do that a little more often. That looked cool. Throws definitely look a lot longer from the side. I look forward to future drone camera footage that we can catch if if we can do a silent one overhead and really be able to capture the s turn of a disc while it's flying that was huge getting up past that rise from Macbeth. that should be a simple approach rick gonna be even more aggressive turning this can it hold on and flex back you to know the it can ew this could this is in equal territory then if it gets down yeah yeah he's oh, gonna wow. be nearing the sand trap that's gonna be 65 feet for Eagle, maybe just a bit longer. Very runnable uphill, as if Ricky wouldn't run it if it was down a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Too true. Eagle goes for the big turn, but this is not holding. There is a lake to the left as well. As soon as I say Eagle doesn't throw the turnover shots, he goes big turn. That went in the next lake. Yes. Oh, no. That's not even on this hole. What a. That's crazy. The only reason I knew that was there is I saw somebody else do that same thing on his third shot, of course. Yeah. Great shot from Matt. Wow. I I am beside myself right now with that shot. And this is exactly right. So he doesn't get a nice lie. There's no line. So he has this tough little approach. Look at that shot. Great scramble. (laughs) Look at that shot. (laughs) Last week with the guardrail between the legs and this week with the wall on your shoulder, <laughs> Eagle is just so creative and talented. It's- I saw Kelavisca shortly after that shot. He was beside himself that someone could go into that lake in two. <laughs> just something that he had never considered as a course sure. designer. And Ricky for Eagle. Wow. 
the cameraman, not much space back there behind the basket to get a stance. Ricky goes, Eagle, you think you can turn the cameraman around? Watch this. Man, this is actually a really tricky putt. It, I don't know if I've ever seen someone go to a park, set up a basket, and practice these little 20-foot downhill putts. It seems like the only time you ever get yourself in a position like this is just in tournament. So it's always a little bit weird. You have to be creative and adjust to the situation. Patient, too. Correct. I see a lot of people get up there. They don't have the proper stance because they're not used to it. You're not going to find it. And then they kind of rush it. Very easy to miss low and high, chain out left or right. And even sometimes when you make them, it doesn't sit in there the way that you like. So Eagle drops a shot to the card, and we've got a three-way tie at the top going into the very attackable eighth par three, 406 over the water. Nothing in the way unless your hyzer is way too wide, but the problems come when you skip in here a little bit too aggressive either side or long. Obviously, a lot of trees and branches to deal with for your putt. Kind of a dream start for Macbeth. Missing the first two and somehow even after missing the first two holes, he has found himself in a tie for the lead after seven holes. Not something I imagined he he imagined he would be in that position right now. That is officially not a good drive, though. He's, Correct. He's going to have a maybe not even much of a line from there. Matteo only two back. Yep. He sees... Paul do that if he can flatten this out, which he does. Oh, yeah. That go looks, in. Go in. Come on. Oh, oh, sit down. Sit down. Oh, and he gets back there into the foliage. <laughs> yeah, that's it. the best you've ever done. Thank you. Yeah. I actually put myself on the spot with those, and then I'm like, <laughs> what did I do this? <laughs> I'm going to say it, guys. <laughs> I'm going to go for it. Skip in. Skip in. It, wow, weird skip, yeah. actually. I was, I was believing it. Great shot, though. Casey White and my group skipped off the ground and chained out for the ace. Let's see if Eagle can do a little one-up on Casey. I do like this, but I think oh, this is going to be more boy. of the just park job. Yep. That's right. So Eagle and Ricky hoping to gain a stroke on the field, or at least on Paul and Matty O here. Paul looking to make some magic happen. He's got a little gap. Mm, who too makes, much. Who makes more of those than Paul Macbeth, though? From the awkward stance, no chance he's going to make it. Finds a way in the chains. And what's incredible about it is he doesn't get in those positions very often. And then he still <laughs> makes it yep. pretty often. Adio doing his best Paul Macbeth impersonation. Look at that oh, little fantastic. corridor. <laughs> so good. Always a fan favorite. Great his, putt. His style is just so unique and flashy as well. You know, the way that he throws, the way that he putts, isn't something that you see anybody try to imitate and take to, you know, the course. But he makes it look so good with his style that he presents that it's just a joy to watch it's kind of amazing how long he's been kicking butt in the south that there aren't more players that look like Matty O the way that they throw because he's just been whooping people's butt in Alabama <laughs> right. for 20 years and yet he still is the only person that throws that style I saw a little comment online that gave me a chuckle it just said how is it that Matty O throws every single shot from his chin because it's kind of <laughs> true his, dry, his backhand drive his putt it all kind of <laughs> originates up high like that but then he just rips through with power. His putt is obviously fantastic, super effective in the wind with all that spin as we fly over the absolute monster par five ninth. See who can get the big drive here. The odds, odds are with Eagle, but all these guys can crush. And we did see Rick lay down the roller from here. We haven't seen that play from many guys. Adio from his chin, turn that one over. This is going to fade out a little bit early. Yeah, it looks like he might have got that a little nose up. Do you catch my drift? Yeah, I got you. Right from the face, nose up. Is he going to go roller again? I would, I would think he would. I mean, it was awesome last time. Yeah, it looks like he's got that angle. Oh. Just gets around that bush. That was close. Yeah, and it's cooking. <laughs> it's as good as you can do. It's cooking.
feel like this year Eagle has added 40 foot of accuracy onto his drive. So he's not just adding distance, right? He's adding 40 mm. foot of distance with accuracy to where now he's, before he'd play with Calvin, Rick, he'd out drive them here and there. But now it's almost every single time that he's pushing down the fairway in the middle of the fairway. Yeah. It wasn't too long ago where this guy mm -hmm. was the one that was pushing down the fairway farther than everybody. Macbeth? Yes. Yeah, he has that golf distance. Like, you put him on the distance track, he's going to throw pretty good shots, but you put him on the golf course and he's going to outdrive most anyone. Right, and through the years when he was doing that, it was a lot like what Eagle's doing now, though. Come mm -hmm. to the field to where he was having that what is considered golf distance now, but that was crazy power then. Adio with a good second shot, still going to be pretty far out of position, I would imagine. Ricky going to go roller roller again. Can he keep this one in bounds? It's a little too flippy. Yeah, yeah, he's going to keep it in bounds, but it's, yeah, like you're saying, it's going to be a little short. Leaving distance on the table. Yep. Still, I feel like he can do an easy hyzer from there, no problem. I think you may be right. Pablo uncorking one here. This looks fantastic. Yes. A few air shots, and he's past the tree that's 480, probably 430, 440 to the pin. I have to say, I played with a guy who threw a 360 sidearm, then two sidearms to the pin with straight hyzer on his third shot. There's only one guy. His name is Ryan. It <laughs> yeah. had to be Ryan Sheldon. There's yeah. no other person in the world. And I don't do a lot of shout outs, but that that's massive from Eagle. He's 10 feet from the out of bounds. That's crazy. And Matty O just trying to put that one in position and he's done a great job of that but knowing with that drive it, you cannot have one errant shot in birdie this hole it, all three of your drives have got to be 500 feet plus when you got people plus. twirling around trying to get extra distance <laughs> you know this thing is just a <laughs> boomer ryan sheldon i mean you're giving him a shout out we got to say He's the longest sidearm thrower in the world. Oh, for sure, without a doubt. And Eagle McMahon has given him that distinction as well. Oh, is that safe? Yes, that's bunker. All bunker. right, just barely safe. Yeah, longer hyzer than I thought there, Nate. You can never tell with these guys. Did he just throw it 500 or 550? This is a nice lift. Look at the win rate here. If this gets on the second shelf, it. what a it. what a wow. how does it go Unreal. that distance and then just sit down? Did you the see how low? He, yeah, how low he threw it, knowing that he would get that lift. That was incredible. He really he is a mastermind of angles and speed control and accuracy and all the things that it takes to be great. Ooh. Beautiful. He just eagles it. <laughs> Like, what? What's going on? If this hole's ever threed, I'm out of here. Like, I'm going to become an accountant. I'm done. You'd be the worst accountant. I would be terrible. That's the exact thing that just went through my head. Is I would like, be the no worst chance, man. accountant, but I'd have to do something else. I. Ricky's got to do something right here. Oh. And he did something, but not what he was expecting. Tough little putt from there. So Rick is in danger of losing his lead. And Macbeth has tied things up momentarily, but Eagle has a very short putt to take the outright lead after nine. This has not been Eagle's best front nine. And to take the lead after uh, missing some putts and missing some drives would say a lot. And there's no way he's missing this one, so... Yep, there it is. Outright lead with just nine to play. Eagle McMahon at 28 under par. That was some very entertaining disc golf, though, on that front nine so far. 
Only eight players in our 121 player field to birdie hole nine. And two of them were on this card. You got to see a quarter of the entire day right here. Wow. Looking at the leaderboard, 28, 27, 27. The 25s from Conrad and Orem starting to be in trouble because there are just so many birdies on the back nine. I feel like whoever's going to take this home is going to birdie at least six yeah. of the nine remaining holes. There's we, not a lot of wiggle room for these guys. We saw Macbeth go nine down or eight down in the final nine in round two. And we've seen many other stretches like that on this back nine. You're totally right. It is an all out sprint from here on out. Nine more holes to go at the 2021 Preserve Championship. Thank you.